I want to start off um, just by recognizing 9-11 and um, came in this morning and, and the scoreboard had this waving flag on the Jumbotron and our ROTC um, was marching every step in Carter Family Stadium. And over the loudspeaker, they were saying the names of many of uh, the people that were lost on that tragic day and, and uh, really just, you know, take a minute to remember that. And the horrific act that it was. Um, and also, you know, uh, uh, my father's birthday and lost him um, this past year. So his first birthday that he's having, and hopefully he's happy birthday, dad. He's enjoying himself in heaven and maybe he's hanging out with Jimmy Buffett today. I don't know. But, uh, you know, there's a series of firsts you go through in, in life. And this is my first year without him on his birthday. So, I want to take a minute to make sure that I, I do sh give him a shout out um, in regard to the game. You know, let's start with our fans. They were awesome coming back after a 90 minute weather delay. Um, I know I didn't say that in my press conference. There's a million things going through my head after a five and a half hour game. But before I even talk about the game, just thank you. Um, the Wolfpack are tough people. And that's what I love about this place. We say hard, tough together. And you guys were. So thank you to our fans, our students, um, showing your commitment to our players and our staff with your actions uh, and your support. Not a lot of fan bases would do that after 90 minutes. And so it's noticed and we love you for it. Um, with regard to the game itself, Notre Dame's a very good football team. You know, in all three phases, they were what they looked to be on tape. They were a big, fast, sound, physical, well-coached football team. And, uh, you know, with that, you know, it was a one score game in the fourth quarter and a one score game in which we didn't play very well. You know, I think we did not play complimentary football. Um, told our team, you know, at the end of the game, the scoreboard is a it's a collection of points that is a scorecard for plays made and plays not made. And they made more plays than we did. Um, Throughout the game, I, I think the score was not indicative of the game, but I do think the score was very uh, indicative of the plays we didn't make at the times we needed to make them. And so it's a great learning opportunity on complimentary football. Um, we talk about that to a nauseum here, but I think all of us know that our older people, sometimes something has to, to actually happen uh, versus being said for a lesson to be learned. Uh, as parents, we all know that this team learned a lot in that game. Uh, that was a top 10 team that we played. It was, you know, rewinding the game. We're down seven points. It's 24-17. Uh, we scored to make it 24-17 on Brennan's run after uh, a nice drive down the field. The next possession, a uh, great pass rush strain by Brent. Uh, by Brandon Cleveland, forces a fumble on a sack. Noah Potter scoops it up. We're at the plus 17, and we got momentum, and, and uh, everybody is thinking, here we go, you know, and it was a great play. Ball's on the 17. We throw, a, you know, an inside fade route to KC in the corner. Beautiful ball by Brennan. KC elevates, gets two hands on the ball, and, and their DB knocks it out instead of us coming down with it. And those are the kind of plays that I know KC is going to make in his career. But when you're playing a top 10 team, you've got to make competitive contact plays that are difficult to make and routine plays. And then a couple just like, wow, like Keon's play was a wow play. You know, it's a great football play by him. And as we've seen over, you know, players careers, I was a freshman that has made some plays, nine catches already for us. But that was a big play we needed and didn't make. And the next play, Dylan, a very veteran center, um, you know, flinches and, and we get a penalty at second 15, now third and 17. All of a sudden we go out to kick, a, you know, a field goal that we normally would make that uh, Braden has been very consistent inside of 40 uh, in his career and just, you know, pulled it. So came out of that. And I think that was the turning point of the game. I really do. Obviously the next three drives <laughs> resulted in touchdowns for them and turnovers for us. So, just didn't get it done. You know, every time we got momentum back, Notre Dame answered and, and you have to give them credit and, and we have to learn from that, taking advantage of momentum. 
Um, but like I said, sometimes you need to lose uh, to enforce something that's important. Our players do play hard. You see that in the end, they made more plays than we did. And you have to give them credit for that. The scoreboard showed it. And that's a reflection of plays made, not made. Like I said, you know, I think on a positive on offense, it's great to see Bradley Rosner. Uh, he sparked us with a, a really nice catch on third down over the middle, elevated. And then the touchdown on the scramble play by Brennan. Keon Lassane, you know, uh, had a great third down conversion, had two tough runs, and then made a great play down the sideline on a diving fade ball. And then Javante Vereen elevated himself. You know, he went from just playing in the UConn game to making plays in the Notre Dame game. So that was growth, uh, playmaking ability that we can build on. We were 2-2 two two on short yardage. That was an area that we were uh, wanting to be better in, and we were. We increased our explosive plays from four to nine in that game. And so, again, area we wanted to be better at. You know, negatives, we didn't capitalize on field position in the first half. The defense really did a good job setting up the offense in the first half with some shorter fields that we didn't score. We had four pre-snap false starts, um, which cannot happen. Uh, two of them killed drives. You know, had three interceptions, obviously, as the game got out of hand, I think. Brennan pressed on one of them. One of them was a great throw, which, you know, was a drop that turned into an interception. And the other was a shot call where we threw a fade down the sidelines, just got to do a better job getting it outside. And But, you know, that happens sometimes when you throw deep balls. But uh, we can't turn the football over at that rate. You know, we have to do a better job of finishing catches. I think uh, the drops sometimes don't kill you in this game. We had three drops that were really nice throws on third down that would have been conversions. Anytime you convert on third down, you increase your odds of scoring. And so those are areas that we have to get better. You know, defensively, uh, like I mentioned, we started fast. You know, two back-to-back, -back, three and outs, really came out aggressive. Uh, it was great to see the first play of the game on defense. Savion Jackson just blows it up and makes a tackle. His first play back from his injury looked awesome out there. I thought our D-line played much better. I thought we were more uh, square and vertical. Last week against UConn, I thought we were turned too much and, and lateral. So that was improvement. I thought our third down defense, uh, particularly third and uh, long, we were very good. And, and uh, got some pressure, four sacks on the quarterback, had five tackles for loss, so nine plays in their backfield. Peyton Wilson and Jalen Scott were both super active. Peyton had two incredible uh, effort plays in the game. I think Shy and Aiden both covered well. Uh, they were tested in their tackling. And they made those guys tackle with their tight edge formations. You know, negatively, we gave up too many explosive plays, you know, uh, and not indicative of who we are. The 80-yard touchdown run coming out of the 90-minute break uh, was frustrating. You know, on the field, I felt like, wow, they just came out and, and really – knocked us off the ball. They didn't. Um, if you watch the play, our linebackers and D linemen fit that play perfectly. And we had an unblocked player that just took a bad angle, didn't see the guard pull, should have been right there, actually got his fingertips on the guy, but should have been there to make that play for a three-yard gain. And then we need to run that down in the back end. Uh, the two-minute before the half drive was was really disappointing. We, we drive down and get a score and uh, cut that game to one possession. And, you know, we're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. And then, you know, receiver gets rerouted by Aiden out of bounds and comes back in and our safety loses him. That's his third. He's playing a deep third. He needs to stay in his third. And that's Sean Brown, just, you know, young player that needs to understand the situation two minute and stay with depth on his side of the field. I thought our eye discipline defensively uh, as the game got on, went on, got worse and worse, and they exposed us with some play actions and nakeds because of that. And, and generally, when you see that, guys are trying to do someone else's job. And and so for us, there's just a big emphasis right now on just, you know, do your part, do it as well as you can, and then play with tremendous effort, something that we'll definitely grow from. You know, I think special teams was a, a definite positive. We won that area of the game other than the missed field goal. Our punt return um, was much better. Jalen Coit went from being nervous in game one to being a difference maker in game two, um, plus 10 in his punt returns and helped us in field position, did a great job catching the ball. The guys battled for him. And our punt team handled a lot of pressure. Notre Dame was a very aggressive rush team. I thought those guys did a nice job 
Uh, Cecil Powell did a great job covering our punts. They had zero return yards in the game, and they were on a mission to block a punt and didn't get there. So guys did a great job protecting. You know, now on to to VMI. Uh, coach Rocco's a, a experienced head coach. He's built several successful programs. We played against him. I think it was my first year or second year. I don't remember uh, when he was at Richmond here. But a really good football coach, hard-nosed guy, and uh, knows how to coach a football team and build a program. He's in his first year. I think for us this week is is really critical to focus on us. It's a great week to get into our fundamentals. And I'm excited, you know, to get back on the grass and see the guys work. And we acknowledge uh, there was an opportunity there to do something against Notre Dame, but also realize the improvement we need to make as a team and uh, and we will make to be the team that we want to be. This team will respond. There's really good leadership in this football locker room. The best way to get over this feeling is to get out and play and go get after somebody else. And uh, the guys know, they, they understand what happened in that game. Uh, there was a, a, a true sense of anger in the team room yesterday because they know that they let one go um, and that they're better you know, than they, they showed in that game. And so it's exciting to get out with a team like that and fight, it, you know, face of adversity, fight harder and get after it. And, uh, you know, on a health note, just do want to make note of this. It's on the depth chart, but Jakeen Harris will be out for the year. Um, he tore his pec in the UConn game on the third play and uh, had surgery, success. He will be back. He'll have another year with us. And, and I know he'll do a great job. He did Saturday or uh, – Saturday, he was out there helping the guys. He'll, he'll be a coach from a player's perspective that we'll have this year and uh, just kind of a freaky deal on a tackle. But, uh, you know, we should get uh, Ashford back either this week or definitely next week. So we lose Jakeen, but, you know, eventually we'll have Rock back. Rock's doing really well. He looked good uh, yesterday in the building when I saw him. So, but prayers for Jakeen. I know. Uh, a guy that works as hard as anybody in this locker room and was going to play, you know, a huge part in our defense this year. So it always hurts losing a starter that has that much game experience. And next guy up, you know, it's an uh, opportunity now for for Sean Brown, an opportunity, um, you know, for Devin Boykin to, to show his leadership for us back there and Bishop Fitzgerald uh, and then Rock when he comes back. Questions? Reminder to uh, use the raise hand emoji. Aaron Beer, do you want to start us off? Corey Smith, how about you? Dave, looking back at that one, uh, you mentioned the the drop passes, but on the defensive side of the football, the missed tackles, things along those lines. I mean, how fixable are those over these next couple weeks, especially – you know, when you enter the meat of the ACC schedule in a few weeks here? They're fixable. I mean, you know, some of that, you got to give Notre Dame credit. Their backs are pretty good. You know, I mean, it wasn't like there was just some bad players out there. You know, I mean, they, they have pretty good running backs. Um, but, yes, to answer your question, they're, they're fixable. I mean, I think tackling is about a lot of things, and there were some bad angles. Um so that has to get corrected. There was one play where we had a guy aligned tighter than he should have been. He should have been deeper, which would have given him a better angle. But anything that you see in a game that you don't like, that's where you go, right? You're going to go to practice and you're going to focus on those things. And these kids will work really hard to get better at the things that they weren't showing their best at. And so, yeah, that's an area we're going to focus a lot on. And we actually focus on it before the game too, you know, they just made some plays. Ethan. Coach, uh, Red Hibbler and Noah Potter made some plays against Notre Dame. Um, yeah. How'd you assess the play of the uh, backup defensive lineman Saturday? Yeah, excited. Like I told you in preseason uh, pre camp, I think our D-line rotation is going to be good. You know, I think we have fresh bodies that can go in and, and create um, some issues for offensive linemen. And Red has been a good pass rusher uh, since he got here. He was in junior college. That's why we recruited him. Really feel like he can be a guy off the edge that creates problems. Noah's a strainer, comes in and just plays really hard. Brandon Cleveland's got a, a huge, huge upside to him. 
and CJ inside are both really active guys. There's a lot of similarities in their play. They, they can both really move. And so it's nice having that um, rotation and being able to keep guys fresh throughout the game. And then Trevally comes in and adds that as well. So, you know, we feel like we've got seven guys that we can rotate through in that three-man front. Jaden? Yeah, so you talked a little bit about the leadership on the team. Um you know, specifically looking at Peyton Wilson and just, you know, can you speak about the growth that that you you've seen from him and just the significance of how he stepped up this last week? Yeah, it starts with him uh, effort wise. You know, he, he ran a kid down in the game and hit 23.4 miles an hour on the GPS. That's the fastest we've ever had at NC State. Like that kid plays so hard you know and, and and so that's where it starts because everybody in, in this entire program like there's just so much respect to the the level of fatigue the guy ends up with at the end of practice game spends it all out there uh, and then just the way he treats people he treats everybody with such care and respect in the locker room and the, in the building and so because of how hard he plays and, and how respectful he is, he can then also be very demanding of people. And so when he does, you know, ask guys to step up, they're going to listen to him. And he's learned how to do that in a really good way. Uh, he, he's commanding on that defensive side of the ball and, and it spreads, you know, he's done a really good job. I'm super proud of him. And, you know, it's paying off, you know, it's paying off in a lot of ways on our team right now. JC. I think you guys had 33 plays on first down, but maybe 28 of them were four yards or less. Did you detect anything from the film review that maybe Notre Dame did or or just was it just a kind of fluky situation? Well, I mean, we got to be more efficient than that. You know, they outperformed us in those downs. Um, they did. A, they were a 30 percent blitz team coming in and they blitzed us 60 percent of the game like they really turned up the heat. Uh, in the game. And so there was a lot of adjusting going on there for a while because that obviously wasn't what we prepared for on those downs as much. And they did a good job. You know, they brought a lot of pressure from a lot of places and their kids are aggressive. So we have to perform better at that. Um, you would say that they won those downs. I thought once we kind of settled down, unfortunately, it took till after the first quarter, we started moving the ball more routinely in those down and distances. But yeah, they had a good plan. They they brought a lot of different pressures that we didn't practice in those situations enough. And so an area we can grow and get better. And obviously we know that opponents copy other people. So that's something we got to prepare more for moving forward. James. Dave, I believe uh, three of your four newcomers at a wide receiver or tight end, uh, Vereen, um, Casey, um, I'm forgetting when Dakari were in, at spring practice with you, but you saw those three and Rosner make plays in this game. Is that something just kind of as they continue to work through the season early and get into games, maybe more reps? I mean, just just discuss their roles kind of moving forward. Well, KC's already getting a yeah. lot of reps. So, I mean, I, I don't think he needs more reps. He just needs to make some more plays, you know, and, and he will. He will. As he plays more, the game will slow down for him. Um, so, you know, these mistakes that he's making now, they're freshman mistakes. He's going to learn and grow a lot. We all saw that through Mecca's career, how much better he got, you know, playing from freshman year on. Unfortunately, sometimes you're going to deal with freshman mistakes when you play a freshman. And we're just going to have to accelerate his learning curve a little bit to the best of our ability. But he's playing a lot. And I think Vereen, as he continues to play better, for him it's going to be more about playing without the ball, the better he can become a blocker. Uh, and he's gotten a lot better in that area. He can help us as a receiver and, and a ball catcher, and he can do a lot of things. Um, you know, Dakari has been injured a lot since he's been here, and so for us with him, it's more about there's still a lot to be seen as he can stay consistent in practice. He has a good skill set, and as he puts together weeks on weeks and days on days, you're going to see him move up. But he's still, you know, he missed a lot of time with hamstrings and groins and things like that. 
even though he enrolled in December, he missed a lot of practice. And so now he's been back for two weeks consecutive. And if we can keep that trend going in the right direction, that will help us with him. Uh, and Bradley just continues to impress us, you know, so his role will continue to grow because of that. And that's the one thing about coach and I, like he's going to reward performers. Like that's what he does. And he's going to continue to tweak this thing. We're still in the early stages mm -hmm. offensively of figuring out what we are. I think, you know, it's, it's not there yet. Obviously you, you come out of training camp, but you think, you know, but games are games. They're different. And, and so this season offense is going to evolve as this thing goes. And just to follow up, a lot of dropbacks in this game against a really strong front. How would you evaluate your offensive line and the blocking uh, in pass pro? We gave up one sack. You know, there was nine pressures. Uh, we got to do a better job there, uh, keeping Brennan clean. You know, there's a couple times where uh, we, he was hot, so we had a guy on block purposely, and and sometimes we got the throw where we wanted it. Um, sometimes he had to run. You know, we can be better, but you know that is a really good front. Those linebackers, mm -hmm. as I said, going into that game are elite players. So they won some, we won some, right? But I don't think that was the the difference in the game. Like it's just, you know, it's kind of one of those games where, you know, there's just a, a lot of it was different, you know. There's a lot of stuff going on in there, the the weather and and then the delay and um drop passes, you know, early in the game that could have made first downs, you know, we had a third and four drop and then a third and six drop in the first half that both would have converted. And so those are moving the chains and and you're not when you drop them, you know, and so just little things like that, you know, and then there's a third and one, we're going to convert. We have a hard count. They jump off sides and we don't snap the ball and then our receiver moves. Now it's third and six. So we defeated ourselves there, you know, so just little things where we got to be better like we were in the first game. Like we got into a lot of those manageable third downs and we operated and we just didn't operate the way we needed to in that game at times. Thanks, Dave. Corey? Dave, similarly in the run game, 84 total yards on 30 attempts in this game, not nearly what it was against UConn, obviously a different team that you're facing. Uh, but just your thoughts on on – the way the ground game performed and and the blocking up front as well. Yeah, I mean, it can be better for sure. You know, when you get behind in the game too, it's hard to to really lean in on it. Um, but that was a good front. They were blitzing a ton. It's a hard front to run the ball into because of that. And I think areas we got to be better up front, hundred percent. And there's things we can do to make it easier for them. You know, I think um, they ran some good blitzes into some plays, and we didn't handle them well. Um, so it's a, a back and forth on that. And I think as coach and I learns kind of what we're best at, it will help. It will help. But um, there are some areas like any game that you were pretty excited about, areas you weren't. You know, it was good to see Kendrick Raphael get in the game. And I thought he made a really nice catch out of the backfield for a freshman to make a contact catch like that. You know, the hit showed some progress for him. I think Delbert Mems ran really hard in short yardage. I think, you know, Jordan Houston didn't get a lot of touches, um, but he really protected well. I mean, they were blitzing. He was picking up guys and did a really nice job in that role for us. Michael, you know, just only got one carry, was in there for a lot of the, the pass game. Um, so just wasn't one of those games where we leaned on the run game, I think probably more because of what they were doing. But um, you know how I am. I mean, that's an area I'd love to be better at. And as a follow-up, you spoke a couple times last week about Brennan, you know, needing to let plays develop a little bit more as opposed to to rolling out um, at times. How did you assess uh, his ability to kind of to stay back there in the pocket and let plays develop as opposed to running uh, and yeah. carrying the football as well? I thought he did a better job of that. You know, he took some shots in there and threw some good balls. Like you watched the throw he made to Bradley Rosner over the middle. I mean, he's got number eight right in his chin and actually hits him right as it's thrown. And that's a beautiful ball. He threw a pretty seam ball to Porter that, you know, we dropped uh, through a really pretty seam ball in third and 17 um, to uh, KC that ended up being the interception, you know, that went through his hands. So I thought he got better. He threw a great uh, fade ball outside to Keon, you know. Uh, so there was areas where I think he trusted it more in there. And then when he had to run, he ran. He scrambled around and made a great play to Bradley for the touchdown, right? 
So, you know, I think as the season goes, again, these are new players with him. He's getting to know these guys still, and it's it's a work in progress. But the kid this works really hard, man. He is uh, – he's a guy when he gets into practice, you can see, like, there was one day he wasn't very accurate with some guys. The next day he comes out, and he's just all over it with them. And he really takes all these things to heart. You know, you love how hard he plays. And so I think, you know, the biggest step, next step is just the chemistry of these receivers and and not just receivers, ball catchers, because so many guys get balls thrown to them in our offense. You know, just being consistent for him and him being accurate for them and them having that, you know, really good chemistry together to make plays for each other. And it'll happen. I mean, I'm excited about the way the guys looked in the, in the team room yesterday. There was a very, very good look, a very upset, but driven look about the team. JC. You mentioned Coach Rocco earlier, and last night I looked up that Richmond box score. Some great names, Brian Sheriffs, Nicholas Sadie. Do you ever look back, and I'm sure in coaching years, it feels like 30 years ago, but do you ever kind of reflect back about what it was like in the beginning and where the program is now? Yeah. Was that 2013? Yeah, it was your first year. Yeah. I think. So that's 77 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Dog years, right? <laughs> It's a long time ago, man. Yeah, it was a nice kick by Nick Sadie to win the game. Um, I remember pieces of that game, but uh, that was a nice kick. Um, we've come a long way in, in a million ways, you know, uh, in a million ways. Culturally, uh, the facilities, what's what's happened here over, you know, a period of time, the stadium, the way the fans, I mean, every game sold out. It's a huge thank you to our fan base. You know, the way we're recruiting, um, so there's just a lot of things to be grateful for. A lot of hard work has gone into it, and there's a lot of great days to come. Yeah, are there any other questions for Coach? All right, Coach, thank you. Um, and just to everybody on here, since the next two games following this weekend are going to be Friday games, our press conference next Monday and the following Monday will be at 6 p.m. I'll email you and you remind you, but 6 p.m. the next two weeks. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Yep.